Hey everyone, Kyle here. So, <clears throat> real quick, I wanted to bring up that last night I was extremely tired, and the video, <laughs> the video had a lot of mistakes in it. I called like a Hive Defender, a Manticora, I cast a Healing Potion by accident, I called the Quinrol Brawler a Burglar, it goes on and on. The, the game was good, and it was fun, I think I played well, but I just was not thinking. And also, tonight, I am definitely extremely tired. But I have the next two days off. Tomorrow, we'll definitely have a better video. Most likely Legends again. And we will go from there. So tonight, I hope you don't mind. I figured at least a good chunk of the community on Legends either came from Hearthstone or still plays Hearthstone on the side, or they still main Hearthstone and play Leg Legends on the side. So I feel like Hearthstone's probably in there, and probably a good chunk of the people that watch me, um, you know, just because some people do play Hearthstone and no Blizzard IPs, might be interested. So I figured tonight, since I'm also tired, and I tried, this is my third time trying to record, um, the first three times I was trying to record Legends, and I just could not think on the level I needed to play control decks on ladder in legend rank um i was just dropping trying to record and i didn't feel like my um not that i mind showing losses but the games weren't interesting i like wasn't talking i was thinking silently to myself and then i was making misplays and it just wasn't a good video so i'm really hoping i can at least get something here that's interesting to watch also just real quick uh, Brian Kibler and Kriparian are two people who are big in the Hearthstone community, so if you're watching this video, the chances are you know at least who they are, even if you even if you don't play Hearthstone. They're big enough that maybe you've at least heard of them from friends that do. And they both really talked about quote-unquote competitive Hearthstone. Um, at least Brian Kibler did, and talked about, um, specifically talked about how... The game, how randomness is good for the game, but at the same time, the quality of randomness they have is not. You know, Legends does have the, you know, if your top card is blue with Cunning Ally, you get a Fireball and stuff like that. But it's a little more predictable. Um, it does have some, what I would consider bad RNG cards, like Balmor's Spymaster, for example. I don't think that card is very well designed, in my opinion. But I came to digital TCGs from playing Magic the Gathering. So, you kind of knew what to expect. There were some cards, and there were people that ran, um, like, Chaos decks. Chaos being decks that were full of just all the random cards they could possibly get, just just for funsies. Um, they weren't necessarily super competitive. And Harson is slowly co is slowly turning into, like, if everybody was running those Chaos decks. And so I really wanted to embrace that. I like the fact that in Karazhan, they uh, put a bunch of Burgle stuff in. Oh, I'm sorry, I just jumped. Oh, but back to what I was saying about Brian real fast, and then I'll get into the Burgle Rogue thing. So Hearthstone, for me, is the game that I play when I'm tired, but I really want to play cards, and I kind of just want to get that satisfying I'm feeling of playing cards and, and doing cool stuff, even if RNG is doing it for me, or partially. And that's why I play Hearthstone. I just play it as a uh, as a time waster, as a fun thing. I also like it because Legends, I like to have full screen. I like to appreciate the game. Hearthstone, I can I can make it super small and put it on the side of my monitor and have like a stream or something going on the left side. And, you know, I don't have to focus completely on Hearthstone. That's, that's kind of what I use it for. But here it is. Here's the game. I'm just letting you stare at the screen for some reason. Oh, and real fast, I'll touch on Kriparian. Because he also put a big emphasis on how Hearthstone is starting to lose its viewership. I feel like it still has a pretty big viewership, but it's not what he's used to. And a lot of the future of this game hinges on the quality of the next expansion pack. And I'm really hoping that they listen to him, because as much as I said I play this game casually... I wouldn't mind playing two games competitively and making content on two competitive games, but until they do that with Hearthstone, this is just going to be the game that comes up as I'm tired or let's just do something fun and goofy. And eventually we'll be able to do fun and goofy things also on Legends as I get more cards. But for now we're just going to do this because I'm exhausted and I'm going to try to make exciting commentary. 
And to help me, we're going to play the uh, Burgle Rogue here because she kind of makes her own exciting commentary. <laughs> so the Burgle Rogue, I'll give a quick run through why I why I like it and what it does. I like it because it's a fun deck that's also really good at being a control deck. And control decks are my favorite thing ever, as you guys already know. So it runs two backstabs. This card is great. Zero mana, two damage on damage minion. I am going to explain the cards because I had somebody send me a message and asked me to kind of go through things a little in more detail, uh, especially on Legends. So I'm going to try and do that without spending too much time. So I'm just going to go through the cards real quick, just say what they do in case somebody here doesn't play Hearthstone or doesn't play Rogue or something. And, and just go through them real quick and then explain this energy and then we'll move on to a game or two. Backstab, zero mana, two damage to an undamaged minion. It's really good to help you grab some early game control. You can do fun tempo plays like on two mana, play a two drop and a backstab so you deny their one or two mana card or if they coined out a 3 mana card even, sometimes those can add a backstab. And then you drop a minion and you immediately flop the board over to your side. This is the first gimmick card in the deck, Swashbuggler. It's a 1-1 one, one that adds a random class card to your hand. This card also is pretty decent because it, it lets you get some kind of presence on the board early game while also most likely giving you a card to play in later turns. You know, the chance of you getting a 1 drop is decently low, unless you're fighting Paladin I think you have the highest chance of 1 drops. I could be wrong, but I feel like it is because of the secrets all being one mana. Blood Mage Thalnos, uh, two mana one one, draws you a card when he dies, and all your spells do one extra damage. So and one of my favorite things to do on turn two is Blood Mage Thalnos into a three damage backstab. Um, those are usually pretty unexpected. Granted, this isn't what you what you want to be playing on two, but it's not too bad. He will cycle and draw you a card when he dies. Two of his rates, um, it does two damage, and just in case you don't know what combo does. Combo means that that text will be the card text if you've played a card already in the turn and then played this one. So it's so it's deal two damage, and if we've already played a card, deal four damage instead. Sap puts a minion um, back in our opponent's hand. I really wish this could target any minion because I would definitely sap my own stuff sometimes. Undercity Huxer is uh, the second gimmick card, but it's also a good card. I played this in my Nazoth Rogue. It's a two mana two two. Um, that gives you a random class card from your opponent's class and puts it in your hand. Burgle, three mana, get two random class cards in your opponent's hand. This is like our version of Arcane Intellect. It's a way for us to get card advantage without draining our deck faster than our opponent and also get things they won't expect. One of the reasons why I think Burgle Rogue, just real quick, um, is actually decent. There's somebody who got to Legendary with a Burgle Rogue. Mine is quite a bit different than theirs. Um... And since there's only 30 cards, quite a bit different in this game, to me, can be like five cards. And that's a pretty big change. But the reason why I think is because when you look at the classes, right, they're all balanced around... <laughs> balanced is a pretty loose term, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, shaman is a thing. <laughs> but, but the classes have attempted to be balanced around the mechanics they have available. You know, like, shaman gets overloaded, but their cards come out faster... You know, four mana seven seven, but you have to pay two mana next turn because you know that didn't cause any problems, etc. So, Burgle I think is good because it it allows Rogue to access cards that aren't designed to be part of their kit, and they're not neutral cards; they're class cards, and class cards are already usually costed to be very efficient for how good their effect is. For example, um. Like, like, Shadow Step. For zero mana, this card's amazing. I mean, would you play this if it wasn't zero mana? Probably not, because it makes the reduction not really that important. Um, however, there are some combo decks that would still want to run this card. I would imagine if it was one mana. Um, giving your minions stealth until next turn, all your minions throw in mana. This is decent. This is uh, still used in OTK decks and stuff like that. Class cards are just designed to be a slightly better than the amount of mana they cost. And so not only is Burgle giving you two cards that your opponent can't possibly predict other than knowing that they're from their class, but it also gives you cards that are guaranteed to be at least somewhat value for their mana. And you get two of them, so it's great. It's just one card for two. Fan of Knives, 
does one damage to all enemy minions and draws you a card, which is fantastic. Uh, Shadow Strike will do five damage to an undamaged character, so just like backstab, you can't use it to finish something off. Um, it has to be completely full health when you use it. Shadow Strike definitely can kill things. It does five damage, but you can't hit something and then Shadow Strike it. SI7 Agent is a three mana three three with combo, deal two damage. This is to anything you choose. Tomb Pillager is a 5-4 that adds a coin to your hand. The other other versions of this deck run Van Cleef. The only reason why I don't is because I feel like he gets Shadow or Death, or he gets Sapped, or he gets Entombed, or they play Sylvanas, or something crappy happens. I understand that he's great in decks where you can like conceal him and then kill them next turn with um, Cold Bloods and whatever, but... I feel like just because you have this guy who adds you a coin, you don't really want to. You don't really want the Van Cleef in there. I feel like I, I'm personally not a fan of Van Cleef. He's he's basically just a druid minion in Rogue. You know what I mean? He's just a big dude. Um, how, however, the coins in this are good because they help you get tempo faster and they draw you cards from Gadgets and Auctioneer, which we'll get to later. Azure Drake, Fat Man at four four. It gives your spells plus one damage and it draws you a card. Fantastic. This card is probably my favorite card in the game. I always love this card. Dark Iron Skulker, also one of my favorite cards in the game. Five mana for three. One second, sorry about that. Um, oh, my roommate is going to sleep. <laughs> um, five mana for three. Oh, I'd be a little quiet. Sorry about that, guys. Um, uh, I really wish I could record earlier in the day, but we have like opposite schedules. Normally, if I'm doing Legends, it's not a big deal, but I'm trying to be a little more exciting for you. Um, 5 mana, 4, 3, it does, it does 2 damage to all on damage enemy minions. So think of it as a Dark Iron Skulker that casts Backstab on every single possible target. So that's that's pretty good. A Material Peddler is the reason why this deck um, is able to exist, in my opinion. Because, of course, Burgle gives us access to, if we use both of them, that's 4 cards in our opponent's class. Under City Huckster, that's 2 more, that's 6. And the Swashbucklers give us two more, that's eight. And I am sorry. I just burped the microphone. That is extremely unpleasant. And we have Nazoth, so we can potentially get, we'll say, ten cards from our opponent's class. So that's already like running a 40-card deck. And Ethereal Peddler reduces the cost of any number of those cards by two that are in our hand. So not only are we getting a card that is theoretically mana-costed to be extremely efficient for what it does, but then we reduce it by two. One of the dirtiest things I've ever done against a Paladin, for example, was play, was, um, I was able to burgle a Tyrion Ford Ring, which is an eight mana legendary that's extremely powerful. On turn five, I played Ethereal Peddler, lowered his cost to six, and on the very next turn played Tyrion. Two turns four, he was supposed to come out, and he's already really strong on eight. And that is pretty awesome. We have one Gadgeton Auctioneer, this mana 4-4 is pretty bad on stats, but whenever you cast a spell, you draw a card, and we do run a lot of low mana spells. So it's a way to help us cycle through our deck if we've fallen behind on card draw. Sylvanas, 6 mana 5-5. Five, five. When she dies, you take control of a random enemy minion. And then Nazoth, um, 10 mana 5-7. And when you play him, he brings back up to 6, since there's only 7 slots on the board for minions. He brings back up to 6 of your minions with Death Rattle that have died. And I think we have exactly six. We have the Thalnos, we have the two Hucksters, we have the two Tomb Pillagers, and then we have Sylvanas. So we can potentially hit all of us. Um, <laughs> sorry about this being here, if you can even see it on the recording, this whole activate Windows thing. Um, I haven't activated my Windows 10 yet because I just got this computer fixed, and I want to make sure that it's going to work and stick around before I spend the time... Uh, What's the word? Before I spend the money um, purchasing a license for the Windows 10, um, the guy who works on computer just used his disk to at least get it working so that we could hopefully make some videos, and we have been. So, sorry about that. Um, this is the deck. I'll probably put like an annotation on how to skip to the actual games. Um, and let's go. Let's go ahead and let's try it. I really wish my earlier recordings had worked out so that I didn't have to being quiet. Um, ugh. but regardless, let's just see if we can get a fun game out of this. I want to at least give you guys something to watch, you know?
right? I really wish that sometimes. I know I'm not the. I know I'm far from the first person that's ever said this, but I really do wish sometimes that it would land on the other options. Babe Magnet is a female. I mean, she can like girls. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say she can't like girls, but I just didn't think Jaina, Jaina Proudmore was uh, into the ladies. Man. Yesterday we threw back a lightning bolt and got a lightning bolt. Today we throw back a burgle and get a burgle. What is up with that? We always say the hello. I am big on being well-mannered to our opponents, that's for sure. Ooh, excellent. Now, while I hate playing against mage, because if they're freeze mage, you basically just lose, I also love the cards we get from mage, so it's like a love-hate relationship. And that is pretty good for their uh, Archmage Antonitis or any other big things they possibly have. Again, we're just hoping this isn't freeze mage. That'd be pretty lame. Do I coin Burgle this turn? It looks like I do. Just so that we potentially have more plays in the future. And those are pretty bad. I mean, this card is good. But it's it's far off. It's six mana. And Arcane Explosion. Actually, we have a lot of spell power in this deck. Or, well, not a lot. We only have three cards. But in this game, three cards is 10% of your deck. So technically 10% of our deck is, is spell damage. That is also one thing that I definitely appreciate more about... Ooh, this is a rough turn. It's only something that I appreciate more about Legends, is the fact that the deck is a more reasonable size. So I'm assuming this is some kind of Tempo Mage. I don't like casting Eviscerate for just the two damage, but since I can't Dagger and Arcane Explosion, and I do not want to let her get cheaper spells, I think we have to just eviscerate this 3-2 for 2 damage. I don't think we have a choice there. Obviously we would have much preferred that to be a backstab. But since we didn't have a 3 mana play anyways, well if it's backstab we could have backstab played book. So, eh. Pretty bad turn for us. Like this turn too. I really want to play the Tomb Pillager, but this is another one of those cards that aren't necessarily um, the best design wise. So we might have to Arcane Explosion Eviscerate, which is really also quite bad. That's our best bet. But the reason why we have to do that is um, this guy, every time he casts a spell, he does two random damage. Again, you're starting to see a theme, right? Add a random mage card, random damage, get a random, summon a random minion. There's a lot of random in this game, which is why I play it so casually. But we can't let him stick around, because that two random damage when we have no board is not is going to add up on our face pretty quick. And if we play the Tomb Pillager, it'll probably just get fireballed or, you know, hit with uh, magic missiles and stuff like that. So our play is just going to be these two. The problem with that is also, since our decks are only 30 cards in this game, you do not have access to three ofs. Two ofs is the max you can get. So we are not going to have another Eviscerate. And there is a card we need to deal with. Hmm. Well, oh, man, we just have nothing good right now. This is really rough. I think we have to just play the Azure Drake and hope that we get something more that we can cast. That is not okay. This is looking pretty rough, actually. Like I said, Mage is definitely a hard one, and we haven't really gotten any good Mage cards. Um, this, the Faceless Summoner is actually a, a pretty strong mage card, but it's not strong when we don't have any board. And that's definitely the situation we're facing right now. So this turn, I'm going to go ahead and just play the Pillager Thank you. and Sap. This guy costs three mana. Let's just, let's Sap this. He can still play and cast Fireball, which is not too good for us if that happens. And that, there's definitely a Fireball. Yep, there is. Oh, kind of cold. That I was not expecting. Wow. Really? Well, let's just do this then. There we go. It does lower the value of our Nazoth if we survive that long, but again, against an aggressive mage like this, I I do not expect us to get to 10 mana without the game already being basically decided. 
So I'm not too worried about lowering the value of our Nizoth. Ooh. That is pretty scary. Hmm. Backstab is very good. However, backstab does not combo with Skulker because he will only hit on damage minions and so will backstab. Hmm. I think we have to just play the Faceless Summoner here. Let's see what we get. That is a really good card for us. It's a 3-5 that can't attack, but it can attack if we do. And uh, our hero power gives us a weapon, so that's pretty good. And we're going to kill this Mana Worm, because it gets stronger every time that she casts a spell. And we don't want it getting any bigger than it is. She's already used one of the fireballs. Well, that sucks. <laughs> now there's a good chance that she can just kill that with any spell, really. This is like Frostbolt, uh, Forgotten Torch, Fireball, Flame Strike. Oh, there's Flame Strike. Uh, any of those, obviously, deal with our board at this point. So, so this is looking like it's going to just be a loss, which is a bit of a shame. Hey, right, let's see here. Yeah, this is really bad. Granted, I mean, just hmm, five, six, seven. So minimum, she's going to do 7 damage. Actually, does this do... That's also pretty not good for us. Wow. Hmm. hmm. I think we're just going to play our two Please biggest play. guys and see what happens here. That's not good. I was... <laughs> Damn it. Again, ran damage to a random enemy. You know what I'm saying? Ugh. This game, this game has really good game feel. I just wish that the actual playing of the game was more satisfying. Even if we get wrecked this game, I think I'm only going to record this one just because I can definitely feel myself losing my energy. And I don't want to... Ooh! Oh, man. And I don't want to... What's the word? I don't want to become boring in the next game. So I'm pretty sure we're just dead here at this point, because, I mean, that is how it goes against mages. I'll take that. Yeah, we're dead no matter what we hit. Alright, so we'll get the well played, and we'll go ahead and just uh, GG out of this. So there you go, that's the Burgle Rogue. It was a pretty bad... a pretty bad example of how Burgle Rogue works. I apologize. <laughs> you know, to make up for this, I'll probably just make another video in the middle of tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll make two videos um, since I'm off. I do have to go get some blood work done, though, but whatever. All right, guys. Well, sorry that today's video is super boring, but I didn't want to not do anything. So there you go. Have a good night, and I will see you tomorrow.